G'day guys, my name's Dave Tran and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. And by request, today I'll be teaching you an acoustic version of Youngblood by Five Sauce. Now for the basics, you'll need your guitar in standard tuning and you won't need a capo for this version. Now please do note, if you're playing this acoustic version with a recorded version, it won't sound good because they're both in different keys. So what I'm teaching you in this video is based off the live performance that Luke does in this video here and also their recorded acoustic version which you can find in the link in the description below. I think this acoustic version is better though because you don't need a capo at all. So for the basics there is no capo and you just need your guitar and standard tuning. Now if you want to master your chords back to front then head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to take your guitar to the next level then check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium which is my complete step by step guitar course. So let's jump straight into this song and I just want to note that there's only two chord progressions that we need to learn throughout this whole song so it's really easy. There's a few variations in terms of strumming patterns but I'll get to them later. So let's start with our main chord progression that's used in the verses but also the choruses. So we just have one line of chords here, so there's six chords in total. Now we start with an E minor, just like that. Then we're going to a D chord. Now you can go to your standard D chord, but the D chord that I'm going to play is what Luke actually uses in his video. And it's technically called a D add 9 add 11 slash A but it looks like this. So what we're going to do is take our ring and pinky finger, put them on the fifth fret of the sixth and fifth strings. Then your middle finger goes on the fourth fret of the fourth string. And then your index finger goes on the third fret of the second string. And you want to leave the third and first strings open. So that's what we're going to call our D chord here, but technically it is a longer name. You can use a normal D chord like this if you wanted to as well, but this is what Luke uses. So this is our second chord, and then our next chord is a G chord. But for our particular G chord, we're going to take this same shape, so just leave your fingers where they are, and slide them up to the 10th, 9th, and 8th frets. So this is our G chord. Technically, it's called a G6 slash D but we're just going to call it a G for simplicity. But of course, you can use a normal G chord if you wanted to as well. So that's our third chord. Our fourth chord is a C slash G. So we take the same shape and we just slide it down to third, second and first frets. That's our C chord, what we're going to call a C chord, but technically it's a C slash G. And then we play that again for our fifth chord and then go back to our D chord, which is just the same shape, two frets up. So that's it for our main verse and chorus progression. E minor, our D chord shape, our G chord shape, our C chord shape, that again, and then back to our D chord shape. Now up here in the annotations, each set of brackets represents four beats. So E minor is played for four beats, then our D and G are within four beats. So the D is going to be for two beats and the G is going to be for two beats. The C is held out for four beats and then we go to C and D for two beats each. So if you're just strumming them once and you want to start off the song a bit slower, it will sound like this. And you can just repeat that over and over again. But as the song progresses, we'll want to add a strumming pattern. Now this is the strumming pattern we're going to use for each of the chords that have their own bracket. So the E minor, which is by itself, and then the C, which is by itself. They have this strumming pattern. Down, down, up, down, up. Right? So down, down, up, down, up. But for any of the chords that share one set of brackets, like the D to the G, we're going to play this strumming pattern for each of the chords. Down, down, up. So it's nice and short. Down, down, up, down, down, up. And then when we go back to our C, we go back to the long strumming pattern, which is down, down, up, down, up. And then for our final C to D, we go back to our shorter strumming pattern. Down, down, up, down. And in total, and 
Now, as I mentioned before, you can use typical chord shapes as well for this chord progression. So we could go. And those are just regular open chord shapes. So that's the verse and chorus chord progression, really nice and easy. And you can just repeat that over and over again. Now, the only other chord progression we need to learn is the pre-chorus, which goes our C chord shape. Now, this is our altered C chord shape. And then our altered D chord shape. And then we go to E minor. And then to our G chord shape, which looks like that. In terms of strumming pattern, we're using the long strumming pattern for every single chord, which will sound like this. And that's it for the pre-chorus chord progression. Structure-wise, that's all you need to learn for the song. Now, there's a few variations in terms of the strumming patterns here and there. So let's start with the first pre-chorus. And actually, the last chord in the first pre-chorus has a shortened strumming pattern, which is just down, down, up, down, like that. So the first pre-chorus will just sound like this. Now, the other variation to the strumming pattern occurs at the start of every chorus. Now, what we need to do is just cut out the very first down strum, just not play it. Now, what you can do is actually just mute that first down strum if you want to stay in that rhythm of the down, down, up, down, up. So you can just mute that first down strum and play the rest of it like this. Down, down, up, down, up. So notice how I muted that first down strum. So at the start of the chorus, the chord progression will sound like this. And then from there on, it's all normal. And that's it for the acoustic version of Young Blood. Just to recap, there's only two main chord progressions that you need to learn and the whole song is built up off them. You can use regular open chord shapes as well if you don't like using the altered chord shapes that Luke plays in his version. So anyway, I'll be playing through this song in its entirety and I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. So feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
Thanks guys, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to take your guitar to the next level, then be sure to check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. As always, hit that like button, hit subscribe, click the little notification bell as well so that you don't miss out on my updates. Please leave your thoughts, comments, questions, and requests down below, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.